today is the dark times. A couple of deals before dawn. Good morning, guys, and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. It is still Wednesday, my dudes, except it's Thursday when you see it. It's actually already July, and I am happily in, I don't know, Paris or Austria or something. I don't really know where I'm gonna be. Somewhere. This is the second video in my travel series. I'm driving. This is tips for traveling abroad. Ooh, how exciting. I actually forgot my list with me, so I'm gonna do two tips out and about, because those are the only ones I remember. The first tip is to plan ahead. So while I was at Harlixton, we did several independent travels. I didn't do as many as other people, but what I learned from the few independent travel trips that I did was that the more we planned ahead, the better the trip was. For example, when we went to Barcelona, please watch the Barcelona vlog linked above. Um, when we went to Barcelona, we didn't realize, I guess, that we needed to plan beforehand or we wouldn't get a whole lot done. You would much rather spend time before you go planning than sitting there in your hotel in this really cool city saying, okay, so now what are we gonna do, you know? So just plan ahead because when we went to Greece, we had a better plan, not a perfect plan by any means. We kind of had an idea of what we wanted to do but we had a better plan and it was just an all around better trip, I think. I really enjoyed Barcelona, don't get me wrong. It was one of my favorite trips for sure. But Greece was pretty dang awesome, you know? So yeah, right now I'm going to get coffee because I haven't had any today and I, I just want some. Also I'm really sweaty because I had to turn the air conditioning down while I was driving <sighs> so that you'd be able to hear me. I have enough money for coffee. I don't even think about that. Can I have a grande vanilla latte ice, please? Thank you. Can you tell me how to get Okay. And the next tip. <laughs> the next tip is to be flexible. So you don't want to rigidly schedule your trip in such a way that you don't have time for the things that you wouldn't necessarily plan for, if that makes sense. I really need to get better about carrying my reusable straws around. Leave room for being spontaneous. Leave room for seeing something that you didn't know was there and being like, oh my gosh, let's do that instead of having to rigidly stick to your schedule. It's more like a mindset change than a planning thing, because like you should definitely plan your trips, because it'll just be better if you do. Can I go? Okay. Yeah. Um, it'll just be better if you plan your trips, but like don't get so stuck in your plans that you don't experience the place that you go to. Okay, mm -hmm. oh no. I just got back from getting some coffee creamer for the next couple of days and buying some SD cards for my trip so that I have plenty of storage for vlogging, you know? So I got four of these, which was quite expensive, but it's fine. Now my room is messy, so I'm just gonna clean that while I go through the rest of the tips. Kinda bad lighting, but it's okay. We'll just keep going. The next tip is to try not to overpack because you don't want to carry a bunch of clothes or whatever that you're not going to use uh, while you're over there. It's just a waste of space and it really bogs you down on your trips, you know? Like, it's not going to leave you enough room to buy souvenirs. It's not going to leave you enough room to be flexible like we talked about with the last tip. So my advice for that is to like pre-plan your outfit. So go through like, if you have more bottoms than tops, which not the case for me, but I would lay out all your bottoms and see if you have tops enough to go with them or vice versa. If you have more tops than bottoms, lay out all the tops you have and then make sure that multiple bottoms can go with each top or tops can go, I don't know, whatever. Just like plan your outfits and say, okay, this first day, I'm probably gonna wear this. Or you don't even have to plan by day. You could just 
lay out outfits and be like, okay, I have this many outfits and to choose from, and then that's what you got. You just have to make sure you remember that whatever you have less of, like for me, I have less pants than tops, whatever you have less of, make sure that they can go with many things and make sure that you remember while you're gone that that bottom is supposed to go with that many top with a certain amount of tops before it's dirty you know but also which is kind of like opposite of this tip but i think it should go with this tip anyway is to pack extra socks and underwear because you're probably going to need them and if you don't need them that's great but you don't want to be caught in another country without enough socks you don't want to be caught wearing the same underwear a couple of times because <laughs> ew especially if you shower in between especially if you don't shower in between to be honest but and also to do with packing you need to make sure that you are mindful of where you're putting what that you're packing so if you are only allowed to carry on you should know that if you're flying which if you're going abroad like then you most likely are flying if you're from the US. When you're going abroad, if you're flying, you should know the TSA guidelines about like liquids and what you're allowed to have in carry-on bags. If you have checked luggage and a carry-on, you need to make sure that you don't pack the things that should go in your checked bag in your carry-on and vice versa. Always make sure you have like a change of clothes in your carry-on, make sure you have prescription medicines in your carry-on and make sure that you like have, I would suggest having a toothbrush <laughs> in your carry-on, but if your toothpaste is too big, I suggest buying like, I don't know, a little tub that you can put your toothpaste in or enough for like that time because you don't wanna be yucky when you get there, you know? So just, I would have enough that if your checked luggage gets lost, that you'll be okay with your carry-on for a few days until they find it or until you can replace those things, if that makes sense. But be mindful of what you pack where and make sure that you're doing great with that, if that makes sense. The next tip that I have is to spend money on experiences before souvenirs. Because while yes, having souvenirs is super nice and super great, if you have a bunch of like big shot, very expensive souvenirs from a place, but you didn't really do anything there. It's just, I don't know. I just don't feel like that's worth it, you know? So my suggestion is to spend money where it counts, to buy a trip to a museum or buy an excursion before you spend money on souvenirs. I'm not saying don't buy souvenirs because it's nice, you know, to have a souvenir from a place. But my suggestion would be to before like prioritize the experience over having something from there. Because to be honest, some things that I bought in other places, I don't really look at all that often, you know? And I remember what I did before I remember, before I remember like the souvenir that I got, if that makes sense. Why did that other one open so much easier? You also don't want to spend on too many big souvenirs. So for example, at Harlixton, my idea was to collect a guidebook from a bunch of places that I went because I have a guidebook collection, which is great. You know, I love guidebooks and I love looking at guidebooks. I love looking at all the pictures and everything. You know, it's just really nice to have guidebooks from places I've been because I can be like, oh my gosh, I've seen that. And then you can show your friends places that you went that maybe you weren't allowed to take pictures or something like that, you know? But guidebooks are really expensive and really heavy. I <laughs> bought a lot of guidebooks. I was gone for four months, so I bought a lot of guidebooks. I did manage to bring them all home. I sent half home with my mom and my grandma when they came to visit, and then I sent, I packed the rest in my um, checked bags and some in my carry-on, to be honest. But it was a pain, a pain to, to do that. So if you're going on like a shorter study, or a shorter abroad trip, I would suggest buying smaller souvenirs or maybe not books, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So I would just spend money on experiences more than books. But my point of bringing up the books is that I did buy souvenirs, but I only bought one type of souvenir and the rest I spent on experiences. Like I didn't buy a bunch of little knickknacks from Paris. I bought a book 
from Paris. Well, I didn't go to Paris during my study abroad, but anyway, you know what I mean, you know what I'm talking about. So that's just what I suggest um, doing is either pick one type of souvenir from each place or just try to limit yourself on what you purchase because experiences are much more worth it than souvenirs. The next thing I would like to say is that money belts, while a lot of places recommend money belts, I don't. I do not recommend money belts at all. They make you look like a tourist. They make you a more obvious target for pickpocketers. And also they're uncomfortable and sweaty. Super sweaty, especially in the summertime. Especially if you're a sweaty gal like me. And also it's impossible to get your money out of them when you need them, you know? So if you want to use a money belt, I suggest the around the neck money belts more than like the like actual belt looking money belts because less sweaty and it's a little bit easier to get to you know but i don't even use a money belt like for my first trip abroad i did have a money belt and i used it i just remember how uncomfortable it was and then when i went on my study abroad to england for harlickson i did not use my money belt one time not even once i did not get pickpocketed because all my important things were deep 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 in my bag you just need to be vigilant you don't need a money belt to be vigilant is what i'm trying to say just money belts are ugly <laughs> they're so ugly and i know they're not meant to be seen but you're gonna look like a tourist and if you don't want to be a target for pickpocketers try not to look like a tourist you know Tip number six is to make lots of copies of your important documents. Because you're in another country while you're traveling, you need to have a certain amount of documents and you need to have them like all the time. A lot of people suggest not carrying your actual passport but carrying a copy and leaving your passport in your suitcase. For me, I haven't done that. And I'm not saying that that's bad advice, it probably is good advice, probably it's good advice, but I always carry my real passport. And if it gets taken, I have a copy in my suitcase, you know what I mean? Which my passport has never been taken before. Never been taken before. For that, I'm grateful. But like, for example, if you have, like I did when I went to Harlickson, an immigration letter, I had several copies of my immigration letter. Leave a copy with your family back home. Leave a copy in your hotel room or dorm room or whatever, and have a copy with you. Which leads into my next tip, if you have copies and stuff like money I wouldn't leave all of that in the same place for example if you have all of your copies in your backpack that's kind of pointless because if they take that one thing they're gonna take all of them and then you won't have any of them so I suggest like I said spreading them out keep one with you one in your bag one with your family one with this person you know just have your copies and your important stuff separate separated and that goes with money also so like if you have multiple cards one card that you use all the time and one that is just for like emergencies it would be really silly to keep your emergency card with your everyday use card because then if your everyday use card gets taken then so did your emergency money and now you don't have any money you know what I mean so I suggest splitting that up the next tip is definitely travel insurance I have never, thank God, had to use travel insurance, but having travel insurance really helps like give you peace of mind while you're traveling. Like you know that your stuff is taken care of. So if you're not going with a tour company or if you're not studying abroad where your school takes care of that type of stuff, I would highly suggest looking into travel insurance. And my last two tips are basically about just study or being abroad in general, not necessarily like traveling, just like being abroad if you want to get the best type of experience which is always my goal so that would be to try to learn a little bit of the language that they speak because it's really it's like more polite to be able to say thank you in their native tongue you know most places speak english also but it's not right for us to assume that they speak our language you know what i mean because just because english is like the dominant language or whatever you or whatever you think about english doesn't mean that we should expect people in other places where english is not the national language to be able to speak english even though most places do if that makes sense it's just more polite to know some things you don't have to like learn a whole new language before you go necessarily but like learn how to say please and thank you and I'm sorry and can I have some directions like before you go because it's good to know you know and lastly eat the local food most places abroad have McDonald's if you are into that stuff which I'm not but don't eat at McDonald's you know what I mean don't eat at McDonald's abroad 
because it's something familiar. Try to go to a, like if you go to Greece, which I've done, go to a Greek restaurant, like a local restaurant, and try like a Greek food. Like don't go and get to an American style restaurant and eat American food while you're abroad because that doesn't, it doesn't enrich your experience in any way, you know what I mean? So just try to eat the local food and if you're a picky eater like I was, I suggest just trying things. Even if you don't like them, just try them once because what if you do, you know? What if you discover a new way to love food, you know? Like I learned a lot while I was abroad with spices because <laughs> British food is not very seasoned, spiced, you know what I mean? So I learned how to season my own food, how to spice up my food with what was available around me, which wasn't always a lot, especially at the manor, but yeah. Not saying that all British food is bad because it's not. My Mita family made wonderful food. Just try the local food. You might find you enjoy it. You might find that you don't, but just try. You know what I mean? Just like with spending on experiences, you would much rather say that you tried doing X, Y, and Z as opposed to, oh, I just did this and it didn't really change my life at all. You know what I mean? So, I don't know, I just suggest doing that. Also, I haven't really gotten a whole lot of cleaning done. I did put the SD cards away, but that was about it. So, those are my 10 tips for studying, not necessarily studying, for going abroad, for traveling abroad. 10 tips for traveling abroad. Mm, yeah, those are my tips because you just want to have the best experience while you're there. You wanna learn new things and you don't want to get bogged down by overpacking and you don't want to get bogged down by like getting pickpocketed and not having any of your fancy stuff anymore or not your important stuff and you don't want to get bogged down not having travel insurance and also you want to enrich your experience by eating the local food by learning the language by spending money on experiences rather than souvenirs i hope that all makes sense and i hope that this was useful for you in planning your next trip, planning a trip abroad, because it's really great. And I truly, truly, truly love traveling because meeting new people and meeting and seeing new places and experiencing different cultures really just changed my life and changed my perspective on the way that I look at the world and the way that I am in the world. And I prefer to be a global citizen where I can be involved in other places and really care about people because I've been there. You know what I mean? So I hope that makes sense and I hope that inspires you to one day strive to travel abroad or to travel to a new place at least so that you can learn something new and experience something you've never experienced before. Yeah, so I hope those tips were helpful if you're trying to travel abroad soon, whether you're studying abroad or just going on a trip. I hope you have a great time and I hope that I have a great time because I'm over abroad right now. So you're in the middle of my travel series. This is episode two of six in my travel series and I hope you stick around for the rest. The last two episodes, five and six, will be vlogs of me frolicking around Europe. So I hope you stick around for that. And yeah, to make sure that you get there, make sure you subscribe, hit the little bell. I'm about to say all that in just a second. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe so you can join my family. Hit the little bell to get notified whenever I post a video so you don't miss it. And that's it. So have a great morning, and if I don't see you later, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.